For much of the mid to late 2000s, Research in Motion's BlackBerry was the most popular smartphone brand in the US, and it wasn't close, making up about 43% of smartphone users at its peak. Even after touchscreen phones from Apple and Google became mainstream, BlackBerry still maintained a strong user base for several years. How about this? RIM is now worth about $66 billion. That's with a B. Some couldn't imagine using a phone without a keyboard. Others wanted the advanced cybersecurity that BlackBerry phones offered. Something that BlackBerry is known for is not getting hacked and having security and privacy, something that is near and dear to our DNA. And the company's stock peaked at nearly $150 in 2008. Now it's sitting pretty at around 5 bucks. January 2022 marked the end of an era. Moment of silence for dear <laughs> departed BlackBerry. Starting today, the BlackBerry Classic device, once a go-to for millions, including then-President Barack Obama, will no longer work. After over two decades of servicing mobile communication devices, it established software and cybersecurity as its sole business. Because they are trying to uh, stage what would be a tremendous turnaround for a company that once used to make smartphones. So uh, they are playing it cautious, but playing it cautious on the other hand is limiting their growth potential as well. But the margin is going up and, and one of these days a switch will flip. So we are hiring and growing and, and, and spending. Overall, it was a tough transition and I'm proud of, I'm proud of the way we're pivoting. So what made this iconic brand have such a meteoric rise and catastrophic fall and what is it up to now? BlackBerry was founded in 1984 as RIM, short for Research in Motion. Its first product was Budgie, which allowed information to be displayed on a screen wirelessly. While Budgie did have some initial success and was even used by General Motors, it didn't last. It made several other products including Digisync, a device used in film post-production, which won an Academy Award for technical achievement. But it wasn't until it developed the RIM 900, one of the first wireless devices that could send and receive data, when Research in Motion really started to pick up steam. It used an early wireless data network to send and receive messages, and it set the groundwork for what would eventually become a BlackBerry. The earliest iteration of the BlackBerry phones we all know began in 2002 with the 5810. It could send and receive messages and also allowed for use of a simplified browser. It was really interesting to go from small volumes of these interactive pagers to huge volumes of uh, smartphone handsets. BlackBerry's popularity peaked in the late aughts. At the time, the brand and its products were quite simply a cultural phenomenon. Coined the Crackberry by many, the phones were seen as addictive, one of the first glimpses of how smartphones would eventually take over our lives. It was really an exciting time. I mean, we as a company had a really strong product. That's Sarah Tatsis, who joined BlackBerry when it was still known as Research in Motion in 2001. President Obama was the first high-tech president and was adamant about keeping his BlackBerry while in office. But I'm still clinging to my BlackBerry. They're going to pry it out of my hands. In 2007, it was the most valuable company in Canada, surpassing Royal Bank, which held that spot for about two years. In 2010, it acquired an operating system called QNX. While BlackBerry was still largely focused on smartphones at the time, this move has since proven to be a massively important acquisition for the company. I was very excited to be part of the, the charter to help BlackBerry in the Next Generation initiative, and also as QNX was now on a world scale platform. Charles Egan joined BlackBerry in 2011, largely because of its acquisition of his former workplace, QNX. BlackBerry's fiscal peak was in 2011 when it did nearly $20 billion in revenue, with over 80% of that being from hardware. Even Kim Kardashian was an unofficial brand ambassador, using the phones until 2016 when her last BlackBerry devastatingly died. A BlackBerry, it's, it's my heart and soul. Like, I love it. I'll never get rid of it. And she wasn't alone with her devotion to the brand. Well past its prime era, many people held out from switching over to a completely touchscreen smartphone, seeing keyboardless phones as undesirable. But in 2007, everything changed. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, 
Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. BlackBerry began making efforts to change up its tech in 2008. Its first fully touchscreen phone was the Storm, which had major hardware issues. It quickly returned to its former button-filled glory before again trying out a touchscreen device called the Z10 in 2013. See, at this point, it was trying desperately to keep up with touchscreen smartphones like the iPhone that were becoming more and more popular. But device sales were plummeting. In 2011, it sold 50 million phones, but just two years later, after the release of the Z10, the number plunged to fewer than 30 million phones. And in the years following, sales continued to fall rapidly, and its stock had a meteoric descent. I think we saw as we were getting closer to our BlackBerry 10 launch and seeing the headway that Apple and Android were making in, in this space. So I would say around that time frame is when I think the, the company realized that, yeah, we would need to make some significant changes. BlackBerry desperately tried to stay afloat by flooding the market with products. In the same time period it took Apple to release four iPhones, BlackBerry released over 30 unique devices. It made an effort to keep up with competition by switching to a QNX operating system which it acquired the year prior, but to no avail. In 2012, longtime co-CEO and founder Mike Lazaridis along with co-CEO Jim Balsillie parted ways with BlackBerry. By 2013, 4,500 jobs were cut and John Chen took over as CEO with a desire to turn BlackBerry's trajectory around. When I came in, we were looking, losing market share. We're writing off a lot of stuff and we're losing money like crazy. Uh, we're talking billions of dollars every quarter. And so I have to put a stop to that. And that was kind of the state of it. Just really more of a survival state at that time. You know, the fact that John Chen recognized early the pivot to software, I remember the day he appeared in Ottawa and spoke and I thought, okay, here's a leader with a plan. John Chen brings strong credentials to BlackBerry as someone who's already successfully done turnarounds historically. Initially, Chen hoped to keep the iconic phones, turning them into a stable source of revenue. But after a few years, we realized that we would never get the volume up. It's a volume game. The moment had came and gone, uh, so to speak. Um, and so we made that pivotal trip to a software-only company and focus on security and cyber and, and things of that sort. See, this pivotal shift Chen is referencing was largely dependent on a few key acquisitions that BlackBerry had made, one of which being QNX in 2010, the operating system that was later integrated into BlackBerry devices. And uh, this was viewed as, you know, one of the silver bullets that BlackBerry needed for its portfolio moving forward. One thing we did was we took our security software, which used to be designed for the operating system of the new, new phones, and moved that back into the auto. The others being the $1.4 billion acquisition of Silence, an antivirus software firm, and the $425 million acquisition of Good Technology, a device management software company. These moves helped BlackBerry more swiftly alter its focus from hardware to software. QNX had previously been fairly well established as a software company dedicated to the automotive industry. And in fact, we supported our, our devices for many years after we announced the exit of us manufacturing and designing our own smartphones. And now, over the last number of years, have fully transitioned into the enterprise and the foundational IoT software space. So once BlackBerry decided phones were not the future of the company in 2016, these acquisitions quickly became central to its business model. Currently, BlackBerry has two main business units, a cybersecurity business unit and an IoT business unit. These are two fast-growing markets. I would like to think of BlackBerry as a company that can actually grow if they play their cards right. The main focus within the IoT business unit is automotive and, and the BlackBerry IoT business unit features the QNX operating system, which is iconic and the de facto standard in automotive. So the, the QNX technology that we have uh, in this vehicle, before we even outfit it with any of our additional sensors, um, was this is running uh, Ford Sync. So uh, the infotainment is being used in, in, in the vehicle and this is prevalent in quite a few of the, the Ford vehicles. We now have the a lion's share of embedded software in most of the cars. So this is really as a offshoot of the result of the strategy shift in 2016, which is where we went from phone to non-phone. Now, BlackBerry software is in 215 million cars. 
It could be powering your car's infotainment system or securing its connected and driver assist features. So what we have here is the MKZ concept vehicle. We use this for autonomous drive demonstrations. We have integrated a lot of varying hardware and equipment and sensors from various manufacturers. A lot of these embedded boards uh, would be the size of a deck of cars. They'd be uh, very, uh, um, very inconspicuous in the, in the vehicle. BlackBerry works with numerous automotive companies and all but one EV manufacturer. You know, we work with all major automotive, automotive OEMs, Audi, BMW, uh, Ford, GM, Toyota, Volkswagen, Volvo, just to name a few that you may recognize. In the automotive IoT industry, BlackBerry says its QNX software is the market leader. The, the demand is actually strong for these advanced um, security and uh, infotainment solutions because of a few reasons. Now, for example, there is an increasing demand for advanced driver systems and for advanced camera systems and also for advanced safety features. If we look at the industry opportunity itself, it's our expectation that the auto software industry is going to roughly triple in size from 2020 through 2030. And its cybersecurity unit is securing the back end of things like mobile banking apps and patient portals. So there's a quite a rich cyber portfolio within BlackBerry, and that's that's securing banks and governments and large organizations and small and medium businesses. While the cybersecurity industry is lucrative with a market size of over $200 billion, it's also competitive. It's taking on tech giants like Microsoft, Snowflake, and CrowdStrike. And in 2021, BlackBerry was only able to get a thin slice of that pie, just under $500 million worth. The competition is very intense with the likes of Microsoft spending billions of dollars a year to, uh, for product uh, innovation. And BlackBerry so far has not been able to build any competitive advantages because of one major reason. They primarily cater to uh, regulated industries such as government entities, financial services companies, and the healthcare sector. But in my opinion, if BlackBerry uh, were to become a, a well recognized, fast growing cybersecurity company, they have to uh, focus more on their go to market approach to come out of these regulated industries and to capture market share in the broad market, the mass market opportunity. BlackBerry has recently received more revenue from the cybersecurity side of its business, but analysts are more confident in the growth potential of the automotive IoT sector. I think that the company can reach a likely a lower peak than we've seen in the past, but a more sustainable growth trajectory and uh, potentially a more profitable future as well on a margin percentage basis. While it was a major shift to go from manufacturing cell phones to cybersecurity and software, it was also a shift that made sense for BlackBerry. Even when they used to be a smartphone manufacturer, they always, um, the BlackBerry had a good name, a good recognition among consumers for a company that prioritized uh, security features. So BlackBerry is not new to offering high-grade, high-quality security features. Its reputation for being secure was easily transferable to part of its new enterprise in the automotive industry. Keeping the Internet of Things and cars safe from cyber attacks is increasingly important as cars become more autonomous. Security researchers have hacked into vehicles and proven that they could take over control of the vehicle. Um, and and I, I do think that there's the potential for payment systems to be compromised or personal information to be taken. And, and when you think of a car, it's, it's more like, you know, 10 plus computers than one computer. I do not necessarily think that you're going to see uh, the likes of returns that BlackBerry enjoyed at their peak when they were a smartphone manufacturer, at least for the next decade. But uh, then again, if BlackBerry plays their cards right, they might be able to turn profitable. So while there's a chance BlackBerry hasn't been on anyone's mind in nearly a decade, it's possible that you interact with something it helped develop almost every day.